Hi guys, um, this is a video I kind of promised somebody I'd do. Um, it's basically, um, I want to answer some questions uh, from just this last video on the uh, shotgunning of capacitors. And uh, <laughs> surprisingly, this has got a lot of comments on here. Um, anyway, the one thing I want to bring up though I, I've got to say something here and uh, to somebody first before I get into the, the rest of it and that's to that guy right there really Al seriously I get preempted when there's football on Honestly, I mean, come on. I guess what I might have to do is uh, maybe get me some cheerleaders. Maybe that'll make it uh, a little more interesting. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, Al. And uh, I had a lot of stuff I like watching too. I'm not a whole lot in football, but <laughs> everything else. Thanks for your comment and uh, everything. I had to give you some crap about it, though. So. Uh, anyway, the true gist of this, more or less, is uh, a guy on here, Atco, I hope I pronounced that right, 2117, and I told you I would make a video. I answered part of your video as far as dealing with uh, using a higher wattage resistor or a higher voltage capacitor, which is perfectly fine. Um, the biggest thing about that uh, is it's preferred on the capacitors use higher voltage if all possible um, you know you know sometimes they can get a little more expensive you know uh, you can have radios that has um, as a standard electrolytics in their power supply of a rating of 450 volts so you want to at least use the 450 uh, you can jump higher than that they make 500 they make 600 volt electrolytics they do get a lot more expensive but if they're small values say like you're working on some 30s radios or something like that <coughs> excuse me mid 30s um, you can get by, uh, you know, a lot of those had like eight microfarad caps in them. You can buy a 10 microfarad 500 volt cap because uh, some of those might have been 475. So you'd want to use the 500, but you can buy a 10 microfarad 500 volt, which will be a perfect replacement for it for a reasonable price. Um, but as far as the papers, I, um, you know, I use. I picked a big one so it's easier to show on the camera. But I use, you know, the uh, 630 volt. Yeah, right. Sure. Focus. So, you know, because uh, most of your paper caps you'll find is in, in, in these old radios will be, uh, you know, 200, 400, at most 600. Now, there are cases in some places in radios especially a cap that goes across the primary, completely across the primary of the audio output tube. Uh, you know, the audio, uh, audio transformer, the primary of it. If there's a cap going clear across that primary, uh, it could be a thousand volt, could even be as high as 1600 volt. And what I'm talking about is, we'll look down here at the this particular radio doesn't have that, but some radios do, where it's got one cap in here, but the cap could be going clean across this primary. If it does, some manufacturers will call for a thousand volt, or even like say a 15, 1600 volt. And and, and the reason for that is, as this, you can get spikes of voltage in this primary that can easily surpass 600, 630 volts. 
they can hit close to a thousand or even more. Uh, it depends on the transformer, it depends on uh, several other factors, but that, that's why they will put a, if it's going clean across from one lead to the other, then they'll put a higher voltage in there. Otherwise, most of your paper caps will be two, four, or six hundred volt. So using a 630s are perfectly fine. It won't hurt nothing. As far as higher wattage resistors, perfectly fine. Uh, the, the only concern, I mean, there is a limit. You can't put a, you know, it's going to be really difficult to put a 10 watt resistor in place of a quarter watt in a radio, especially in some tight spots. But, you know, if you can physically fit a the higher wattage resistor in place, uh, you know, great. Uh, now, as far as the micas go, and what I was talking about on there was uh, the guys like down in this circuit here, C6, C7, C5, these are all mica caps. Now they're going to ground and you can follow the coil back and follow it up through C18 and finally come back to a <coughs> excuse me, a B plus voltage. But in order for everything to pan out to even possibly damage these coils, this one would have to get dead short. Um, this guy would have to go dead short. This one's a trimmer, which could short. This one would have to dead short, and this one have to dead short. So you got a lot of caps that would have to go dead short before I'd put any B plus actually across these coils. Now, yeah, it's possible, and what, how, how much voltage will be there? I'm not sure, but it's going to probably be around 100 volts, and you know, I, I, I don't really see it happening. Micas are not generally uh, the type of capacitor that goes dead short. They, they'll leak. Uh, the biggest problem with them is also the, is the reason for their leakage. It's called um, silver mica disease is uh, one of the names and stuff. But what happens is the silver plate, silver uh, plates that's in them will tarnish. It corrodes and will turn black and the capacitance on them will reduce drastically and due to processes I'm not going to go too in depth the it appears in a way that they the silver will actually start migrating it's actually the the corrosion that's migrating more than anything it, it just starts building upon itself and they build these uh, uh, little whisker like hair type tentacles that can infiltrate into the mica push their way into the mica insulator as well or dielectric as well as around it and cause minute leakage but uh, the biggest problem with it, it it changes the capacitance reduces it and they're generally you know they're in circuits with coils they're part of the resonance circuit resonance circuit and that changes the resonance of the circuit so the frequency resonant is different and which in turn causes the radio not to operate the way it's supposed to you'll see this in you know IF cans on newer radios where they got tuned slugs the uh, inductors tune instead of the capacitors when you uh, adjust uh, the IFs up here and those will have uh, completely open, generally completely open to the air, several mica caps in them and they corrode and the capacitance gets way off and the darn thing goes completely out of, out of frequency resonance for the frequency it's supposed to be. As far as, the, the only cap in here that is a mica that would be of suspicion and watching would be this guy here. Uh, you'll find this cap, this is a, the, the 6Q7, this is the triode do diode detector tube. What this cap here is for is, and a lot of radios will have it, 
it is a bleed off of whatever's left of the IF, RF energy, uh, that will make it through the filtering circuit and it's there to clean up. It'll block audio, but it'll let that IF frequency, the 455 or whatever this is, 465, uh, return back to ground. And um, that's what it's there for. It's just a, a decoupling final filter cap. Now, this plate is probably got around about 40 volts on it. If this was dead short, the worst case scenario is this is like I think a one third watt resistor is it could end up burning this resistor out. Uh, there's not a lot of current here so even with a uh, and not a lot of voltage so there's not going to be really any damage to here so I'm not as concerned about this cap again mica is generally I've never actually honestly seen a shorted mica that hasn't had physical damage done to it. Now, yeah, you know, if, if something has banged it and smashed it or somehow and uh, broke up the mica inside and the plates have came together, yeah, you can have a short. But just under normal operation, they'll go, they can go leaky, but um, a dead short, no. So, do you replace them? Or do they need replacing? Do they need blindly replacing? No. Uh, they, you're never going to see anything usually as a general rule wrong with them as far as looking at them. Here's a, a particular one here. Uh, the, the biggest problem that happens with them is over time air will leak through this plastic at the seams and get inside and cause the corrosion to happen it's a slow process and it's many years in making what I do is I'll I replace the paper electrolytics check the resistors and I check these uh, for leakage now in order to do that you need something like this ICO 950B uh, Capacitor tester, you can get a Heath kit, you can get a Knight kit, you can get solar. They're they're almost a dime a dozen on, on eBay. They're they're literally were millions and millions of these things made. So uh, they're not real expensive. And I would suggest getting one, if nothing else, just for checking the micas. But you take one lead loose and check it, and if it checks fine, put it back in, don't worry about it. Uh, but I do check them, and of course I check resistors, make sure all the resistors are within tolerance, and so on. But the paper and electrolytics, I don't even mess with testing, I just go ahead and replace those. I hope this answers some of your questions. Uh, I, about this, if you have any more, just leave a comment on this video. Uh, one thing um, in my uh, Google Drive, I uploaded a book. Is um, well, it's reference data for uh, radio engineers. It's a it's a book that radio engineer uh, we use for because. No one remembers every formula, everything, all the information about everything. It's too much to remember. So, you have reference data. It's a great book. It's got a great um, chapter on components. And uh, this one is the 62, I believe, edition. Uh, so, it, it kind of goes into, it goes into film. Uh, resistors and stuff and explain some of that. It talks about testing, talks about all this stuff. So check it out. I will put the link again of my Google Drive and this folder. It, it is supposed to be set up for sharing. I know that Art has looked at stuff in it so it is obviously working. I got the sharing set up right. So I'll put it in the description. 
Now I want to quickly answer uh, another question, not so much on this video, but it was for someone else. It was on another video he was asking. Just a little bit about me. Uh, I don't talk much about myself. I feel a little self-conscious. Okay, I am formally trained. I have a master's degree in, in uh, electronics engineering and mathematics. Uh, I taught, I, I worked first after college. I worked for about eight years at a radio TV repair place until it closed. And I um, was fortunate enough that my thesis advisor actually was in there uh, just a few days before it was actually going to close and offered me a job. He had became the department head and he offered me a job so I went back to my old college and I taught for several years uh, various different electronics courses primarily he wanted me for tubes uh, they, he believed in tubes and even though we were really you know quickly into solid state uh, and also got involved in teaching math too which was no big deal I, I, I love math so I enjoy teaching it and so I, I taught math and electronics for many years before um, I retired and I still teach a night course uh, it's mainly just it it's for um, adult education type thing um, it doesn't actually carry a college credit but it is a, a uh, semester long one night a week course on uh, test instruments oscilloscopes, meters, voltmeters, signal generators, uh, RF generators and so forth and so on and how to use them, how they work uh, or basic theories about them and meter loading and so forth and so on. It's mostly a lab course, it's not a whole lot of um, book work so anyway, that's who I am and what I do or have done in the past, and I hope that answers that question. This video has gotten longer than I anticipated. Um, I will probably do something a little more on, I, I still want to do something on color codes <laughs> and stuff. Uh, one other thing, start next week, I'm not sure whether it will be tomorrow I'm hoping try to is start math and sometime next week also start um, back into tube theory I'm not sure I'll probably maybe do a, a first a, a little review of what of the videos already done just a real quickie review I mean because they're there you can still go back and look over them but there will be a continuation of that and also a more in-depth version of that. I will be doing a theory video that deals with that is math oriented and theory videos that are not math oriented. Uh, you know some people don't feel comfortable with the math and that's totally understandable. Um, also be like I said doing math we will start out real basic so all the those of you that are really good at math, it may be a little boring, but I need to start out basic and work our way up. Uh, one other uh, series of video uh, video I want to do is circuits, both DC and AC circuits. I'll probably DC is real uh, short, so I'll probably just kind of combine it right in, and uh, which will be going over you know things like Kirchhoff's laws and and so forth and networks and. And then we'll be going into, you know, more in-depth in capacitors, capacitors, inductors, inductive reactances, capacitor reactances, impedance, filter circuits, so forth and so on. Uh, so, anyway, plus we'll be doing our builds. Uh, signal generator is set in here. I need to get back to it. And I'll be doing a video next week on where we're at on it and showing some stuff of where we're going with it there are going to be two radio builds if not three the first one will be 
a multi-band uh, radio with probably a push-pull output and uh, so it's probably going to uh, with an iTube so it, that's going to be the first radio build that I want to do something just do an all-american 5 radio simple radio go through some of the stuff about it too and then possibly if I've got everything I need I'm not sure what I got in my parts anyway I may do an FM radio like an AM FM radio or something um, so anyway that's where we're at uh, don't forget the other video I put up here guys it seems like everybody's commenting on this one and paying attention to this one the other one the last one on the RF generator which is the last one uh, it seemed like it kind of got left behind so anyway thanks for your comments guys and uh, I, I, I just wanted to do this and uh, oh I, I know where you're coming uh, Lon King 168 it is rather surprising that that those bumblebee caps are worth so much I, I, I don't quite understand it either why but people are buying them on eBay and I honestly thought at one time putting some on there for just for the heck of it that I've taken out radios but I guess there's some people that want those uh, I don't know why but anyway guys thanks for your comments and uh, I'll keep the videos coming you guys just keep a watching and uh, we'll uh, hopefully have some fun learning some stuff and everything else uh, so thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video